Oh. And now, ladies and gentlemen, once again for the second time tonight, from the Emerald Island here in the Caribbean, St. Martin, St. Martin. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing the white and weighing in at 147 pounds. His professional record, 23 victories without a defeat, with one draw and 14 KOs to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, Damas y Caballeros, con Israel Rio Piedras, Puerto Rico, introducing the number one ranked WBC welterweight contender in the world, the undefeated challenger, Wilfredo Rivera. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing white, trimmed with red and blue, and also weighing 147 pounds. Since capturing Olympic gold in 1988, he has won six world titles in four weight divisions, and his 37 victories with 16 KOs, one disputed loss, one disputed draw, make him without a doubt, pound for pound, one of the best fighters over the last decade in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from Norfolk, Virginia, the WBC welterweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea Whitaker. Pernell, we're afraid of. You've had your instructions inside the dressing rooms. I expect you to behave like gentlemen. Keep your punch on the target. Good luck to both of you. Rivera is one of those fighters, Jim, you know, that I tend to fall in love with when they come out of nowhere to challenge for a title. Most often it turns out to be a one-night stand. Let's see if we can get a more serious relationship going here. Alfredo Rivera, no stranger to southpaws. This will be the eighth time in his 25-fight pro career that he's fought against a southpaw opponent. Is that important going against Whitaker, George? Well, most importantly, you got to be enthusiastic. You're going up against a good, experienced southpaw. You just can't beat him fighting against a southpaw. You just got to get out there and be silly about your aggression. A straight left hand. Tactical start for both fighters. Rivera looking to find a way to start sticking the jab, and Purnell just pawing back at him. As if to say, okay, if you're going to paw with your jab, I'll tap you a few times, too. <laughs> Whitaker has to start to drop his hands and do the little tricks that he normally does. That means he's a bit tight right now. Once he finds himself at home and start playing his tricks, you'll know that he's relaxed. Kind of a look what I found counter right inside by Rivera as Brunel Whitaker walked into it while looking for an opportunity to get in. You see Brunel ducking and looking as he will occasionally do. Rivera that time with a lead right hand. He'll occasionally switch to a southpaw stance because he throws that lead right hand well enough to use it as a jab. When you're a veteran like Cornell Whitaker, your whole career is dependent on how many tricks that you're able to bring to mind quickly in three minutes' time every round. Power is one thing, endurance is another, but you got to have a lot of tricks up your sleeve. You got to drop your hand, draw your opponent, you got to do something, stick your head out or something to make him start throwing punches. You don't want him to be conservative at all. At all. 
striker in his last fight. Got a rare sixth round knockout over Jake Rodriguez. Prior to that, he had had 10 straight decisions in title defenses. And as far as tricks are concerned, this man knows everyone in the book and has invented some that aren't yet in the book. Not only so, he's starting to land punches to the belly of Revere. Watch it go. Let's see it go. Renell greening at his own antics here as referee Larry O'Connell says, let's get serious. And round one comes to a close. As we go to Rivera's corner and he waves to the crowd with the Puerto Rican banners in the background, our interpreter is Hector Garcia. Just take it easy. Just be relaxed. Don't forget what we tried at the, at the gym. We practiced, we worked on, this, on those moves. Don't forget what we practiced. Move la your lateral moves are very important. And just go for it. Simple as that, all right? Now, watch him this time. He's going to come back with the hook. But look, move that head. Just keep the head moving. And keep sticking him with the jab. Body, body and chest. Body and chest. Forget his head. But keep, keep him with that left hand. Keep him with that head. It's not that jab. Second punch this guy's up with the jab. The early impression is that it will take Whitaker a much longer time to take the bark off his opponent than it did for Ike Corte to do it to his opponent. This is the kind of guy it's very hard to look good against. Yeah, that's sort of to be expected given the disparity in their styles. Brunel isn't a knockout puncher and doesn't look for the opportunity very often. But the veterans, it's very important when you're a veteran like Pinero Whitaker to win this fight in the last three, in the first three rounds. So that you get the guy reaching, jumping, flinching, and the fight is not hard as it go on. But you take him out of the fight in the first three rounds. And you do that through what? Guile or aggression? You hit them in the body a lot and in the chest to take the power away, number one. And secondly, make him think, be unsure of everything that he does from that point on. Make him unsure about everything. Well, you saw Rivera's very low connect percentage in the first round, only 17%. That's pretty typical of opponents who get in against Whitaker and find him very difficult to locate. Whitaker knows everything about himself. He knows if he gets low, make the opponent get low, he no longer has the height and reach disadvantage. he got a lot of tricks he plays out there. you got to keep him up. When a guy's taller than you, make him shorter. So by bringing Rivera down to him, he eliminates the taller man's leverage. That's true, and that's what you do. You keep stooping down, stooping down. Finally, the tall guy gets low, too. Whitaker landing the jab flush. Rivera trying to come back to the body. Now Whitaker lands a straight left hand. And as a veteran boxer like Whitaker, you throw heavy punches never to knock a guy down, but only to make him respect you. Straight right hand by Rivera, but so far it looks to me like the tall Puerto Rican is just too cautious, George. He's going to have to throw all this caution to the wind and go. You've got to do it. Probably the greatest fight I've ever seen in that weight division is Jose Napoli. Threw away his scientific right, fighting ability and attacked Curtis Coke like an amateur and won every round. Hands down. Get her out. Punch it until they go your other arm. a left hand lead. Rivera simply looking confused against the master of deception. Great right hand lands for Whitaker. Second round not much better than the first for Wilfredo Rivera. Wilfredo, llevamos dos. Llevamos dos. La pelea está para él. The fight is even. 
we have to we have two rounds yeah, yeah. already in. The fight is even. You, lateral moves are very important. I don't want to keep telling you. The lateral movements are very important. Abajo, metiste para el lado opuesto. Go below. Tiene que estar más vivo con la recta de él. Oíste que no te pasa nada. Right? And then get your combinations off. He's trying to hit you with the right hand. That's all he's got. And don't stand in front of him too long. Turn him, turn him, turn him. Feign him. Move that head, baby. Move that head. Start getting him a lot of head moving now. Give him a little bit of bullshit. You're doing beautiful like that. Take a little step to the right when you jam. All right, you're second side. Right here. You heard the voices of Ronnie Shields and Lou Duva in the corner of Brunel Whitaker. Rivera's lifetime ambition is to be an accountant, which tells you something about his temperament and personality. He's going to win this fight. He's going to have to go to the gaming tables a few yards from here, take his hands out of his pockets and his sharp, put his sharp pencil away and just go to work. You know, an extremely devout Christian, Rivera yesterday when we met with him, had his Bible in his room open to the book of Job. And as George reaffirmed to us, Job is the ultimate lesson in patience. He's been too patient here so far. No doubt about it. You've got to get a little amateurish with Bernard of Willeker. The more professional you get, he's the best at that. Once you get stupid and out of range and he can't calculate what you're going to do, then you'll win points. Just Maybe. brawl him. Change it up. Rivera leaning back after he throws his punches. Now he gets to the body as Whitaker comes in. And another good right hand body shot for Rivera again as Whitaker was coming in. Now Whitaker's got to protect himself from these kind of body punches. Take away a little of his jab. He's, he's dropping his right hand now. There's a cut, a bad cut, probably from a headbutt. Over the eye of Rivera. On Rivera's forehead. And we're just in the third round, Harold. What does it mean? Well, at this point, if they uh, if they stop the fight on a kind of an accidental headbutt, it's a technical draw. You got to go four Fuck rounds before we go Fuck to the scorecards. Four Flip completed rounds. Flip Romanski has given permission for the fight to go ahead. He doesn't think it's dangerous. It is high on the forehead, just below the hairline. Well, maybe this but will be what it takes to release Rivera's inhibitions. But as the blood starts to flow right. again, Whitaker lands a solid left. And it's flowing into his eye. That's what makes it dangerous. It's not the cut itself. The blood flowing into that left eye. That cut is in an awkward place, George. You think there's any chance they can get it stopped? Right, because he started messing up his vision. He started blinking a lot. Ominski from Las Vegas, very cautious doctor. He's had some bad incidents in his life, and he's not going to see them happen again. Switching southpaw now so that the lead eye is now the right eye where the blood is not trickling. Very into his smart. Eye. Very, Very smart. smart. Terrific tactical move by Wilfredo Rivera, and now immediately he lands two solid shots. The blood may be worse than the cut, but it's pretty bad, that blood. I don't think I can recall anybody looking quite as bloody as this. Big job between rounds for the cut man, Jim Strickland, in Wilfredo Rivera's corner. And the doctor, Flip Romanski, is coming up on the ring apron to check it out. Now, this is the second stoppage in the round by the referee, and this takes place with scant seconds remaining before the bell. Time for maybe one more. Rivera shot, and then the bell is going to ring. Jim Strickland gets right in front of the fighter and goes to work. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. There's the cut. It's okay. It's this, this is okay. They're putting some kind of an ointment on it. Harold, what are the legal substances to put in the cut? Well, generally, uh, in, in these title fights, they only allow you to use adrenaline 1 to 1,000. But most quantum men make an agreement. They let you use thrapin or avatine. I think he's using avatine. Now Here let's comes take the a butt. look and catch the butt. Right there. 
right there. One heady fighter to another. I think the blood on the top of Whitaker's head comes from Rivera. Harold, will the Avatine stop the bleeding considerably more rapidly than would have been the case with the Adrenaline Solution? Oh, oh absolutely. There's no question. All the good corner men want to use Avatine today. Incidentally, Jim Strickland, the cut man, registered pharmacist, former pharmacy owner in Chicago. Good cut man. Did a good job here. Has stopped the flow for the moment. Harold, who is a pharmacist himself, is partial to pharmacists. He knows a good pharmacist when he sees one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Now that cut is way too high on Rivera's head for Whitaker to even begin to think of targeting it, right, George? The good thing about it is you send Rivera back to his corner, and they're thinking more about the cut than they are instruction. And that's what you gain with a cut like this. Get them out of their game plan, and that's what this cut has done. Now Rivera's going to stay in this southpaw stance for a while. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised to see him stay in it the rest of the way. No doubt about it. He's showing him the side that's not bleeding. That's only going to help. And it also gives him a chance to see better because that lead eye is the one that isn't bothered. Good, strong left hand over the top by Rivera. I think Whitaker's thrown off by the southpaw stance a little bit here, George. Well, it'll make him fight a bit more. When Whitaker's thrown off, he starts trying to fight. And sometimes a veteran needs to get out there and know he's got to fight to win these fights. lands a hard left hand counter inside. Straight right hand by Whitaker. Rivera momentarily stunned. Brunel with a roundhouse left and Rennell Whitaker senses a chance here and starts to get aggressive. Not only so, he made his opponent switch for a moment back into his customary right hand stand. And a veteran look at these things. All Everything right. you do, they think about, I made him switch. All right, George, we're going to go over to Larry Merchant right now, who has gone over to Jim Strickland, the cut man, in Wilfredo Rivera's corner. Larry? All right, Jim, would you tell us how dangerous that cut is, if at all, and what danger it poses? Well, if we will not stop the bleeding, it's very dangerous because it'll blind him. He won't be able to see them. You, you saw how blood, the blood was bleeding, you saw how profusely it was bleeding. But I think I'm able to control that blood. What have you? What did you put on it to try to control it? I used a mixture of avatine and lanolin, and I, I, and I flooded it with uh, adrenaline. All right, thank you very much. Some bleeding now from the top of Rivera's skull, not nearly the deluge that gushed out of there right after the cut came in round number three. So Rivera making his way through round four with reasonable control and not too much more damage from the butt cut on his head. Ya se controló la herida. Uh, that, that's, it's already stopped. The bleeding's already stopped, so relax. just relax. Don't worry about it. Listen to me. You, you, uh, try to hit him in the shoulders now. Go to the shoulders. And apply, you have to apply more pressure. I need you to be more aggressive. You have to be more aggressive. You gotta throw at this guy here. You throw two or three punches, he can't do nothing. And look, don't stand right in front of the gap. No, give jab, him a lot of jab, pain. Jab, give him a lot of pain. 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 Round five coming up. Round four was the best in the fight so far for Rivera. Maybe, maybe the desperation that comes from being cut and feeling and tasting his own blood has activated the gambling instinct in Rivera. Harold Letterman, how do you have it so far? Well, Jim, I've got it three rounds to one, 39-37, Pernell Sweet P. Whitaker. Jim, I think the mistake that Wilfredo Rivera's making is he stands, he's standing straight up. I mean, he told us he was going to give his head movement, he was going to bob and weave, and he lied. He's standing straight up like a totem pole. He's an easy target for Pernell Whitaker's left hand. 
Harold, you must have given Rivera round four. Uh, exactly. I gave him the fourth round. But, you know, they landed, they landed the same amount of punches, but Wilfredo really landed the hardest shots in the fourth. I have the same score. And Rivera is back to his conventional stance, George. Now he switches back to southpaw again. And the point is, Rivera is not standing up. He's bending his knees down to Cornell Whitaker's height with his head up. If he would only get his legs a little closer together, he'd have a reach and height advantage, and he's not doing that. What about the lateral movement his corner keeps crying for? Well, you don't need lateral movement if you're above. You're out up there in the sky. One thing you don't want to do is move your head because your head is already out of the way when you're taller. He brought his head down far enough to allow Whitaker to land that over-the-top left hand. Brunel starting to throw harder punches now as the fight progresses. There are some in Whitaker's camp who are worried about his stamina because he had the flu during training, and then he got a bronchial condition afterward and eventually took antibiotics to clear it up. But he did not have the best possible training circumstances. And right now, Pernell Whitaker, the veteran, has got his right hand low. He's pacing himself, and this is when Rivera could be aggressive and win some points here. But it just doesn't seem to be in him to be aggressive enough, and now the blood is starting to flow again. We're into round five now, so let's reinterpret the rule on the accidental headbutt cut. Okay, Jim, as long as uh, referee Larry O'Connell says that that cut was caused by an accidental headbutt, since four completed rounds have, you know, since four rounds have been completed, if the fight is stopped because of that cut, we go to the scorecards. Even if it's stopped in the eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh, or twelfth round, we That's still it. go to the scorecards if the fight is stopped because of the cut that was originally produced by a headbutt. Whitaker is starting to land that overhand left with some regularity, and he might just have a chance to whack Rivera out of here, George, because he's throwing more power shots than he normally does. Uh, Whitaker, as a matter of fact, he, he looks down on himself when he tries to get a knockout. He'll land those punches, but it's about getting, give me my respect. We're, we're not doing too good. You allowed him, to, allowed him to get in. You have to apply pressure. You, come on, man. Those lateral movements, I keep telling you. Those punches to the head. Go to the body first. Drink some water. Wilfredo, you have to apply the pressure. The jab, jab, jab. Don't be in the same place, baby. Get close by using the hooks. Throw two or three shots at one time. Second shot. All right, two or three shots. Come on, two or three shots. Round six begins on the island of San Martin. The wind starting to whip through this outdoor makeshift boxing setting just a little bit more strongly than before. conventional stance that exposes the side of his head which is cut to Whitaker's right jab. That's right. He's still making that mistake of spreading his legs too far, bringing his height advantage down. The giant and Jack and the Beanstalk, you don't get the, the giant doesn't try to bob and weave with Jack. He uses his height. In this case, Jack doesn't even have to chop down the beanstalk because the beanstalk is coming to him. <laughs> Whitaker not as technically proficient so far as is normally the case, at least not by our punch stat numbers. He's landing at about a 16% lower rate than is normally the case. Rivera getting some chances, especially when he goes to the southpaw stance. Veteran starts to play his tricks. And Rivera remembering to go to the body there. It's a good idea. He got a 
couple body shots in on Whitaker in the early rounds, and he'd be well advised to keep after it. That's true. Now, Whitaker, when you're not in good shape, you got to act like you're in good shape. Combination landing for Whitaker. Whitaker, what he's doing, he lands a good shot, then he makes his opponent try to pay him back. Then all you do is step out of the way, let him expend some more of his energy. Tough to beat Brunel Whitaker in a tactical boxing match. No doubt about that. He knows he's going to try to get to pay him back now. Go. You put on one punch and then you quit. All right? Now look, this guy is too tall for that. All right? You can't just throw one shot and get away with it all the time. You got to go behind two, three, four punches. Just stepping around this guy. You ain't got to fight with this guy. You can just keep boxing like you're boxing, okay? But you got to be busy. That's all it is. You're not Simple busy enough, Pete. You're not busy enough. Come on, Ben. You Pulle have to put the pressure. Si no We're not going to catch up with this guy if you don't apply pressure. You have to do it now. Si pararlo, que if we want to stop this guy, you got to apply the pressure. Otherwise, we're never going to do it. So go for it. Go for it, man. You have to throw those punches low. Combination. All right. Ordinarily, Cornell Whitaker frustrates this type of awkward, tough, willing fighter in the first half of the fight, makes him come to him and open up, and then runs away with it in the second half of the fight. But we have to ask the question again, is he in the kind of top shape that he can do that, the same thing he has done over and over? only threw 47 punches in round six. That's a very low work rate for him. He only connected on 27% of them. That's an extremely low connect percentage for him. So there are some dark signs on the horizon for Whitaker, despite the fact that he has been up to now in control of the fight against a fighter who is trying to deal with a very deep cut near his hairline on the left side of his head. But that cut did not bother him in the last round, didn't open up, and appears to be no factor at this moment. Credit Jim Strickland, the cut man, with having gotten the job done up to now. Rivera's back in the conventional stance. If he gets a little bit more aggressive and starts throwing at a higher rate, Whitaker's going to have to work here. Stand back, stand right back, stand right back. All, all the veteran Whitaker is doing now, apply some pressure, land about three or four punches to the pit of the stomach, and keep close to him while you're resting. So he's coasting. He's coasting, generally coasting to get his win back. Stay close. Close range. 
Rivera goes back to the southpaw stance. Gaming with Whitaker just a little bit. That's what a veteran wants from, from a young fighter. Make him pose, throw his punches, bow your fist up, make pose for me, and give me a, time, a little time to rest. And that's what Whitaker is getting. There's a small mouse next to the right eye of Purnell Whitaker, George. Now, Purnell has no history of cutting, but there is a tiny blemish, a mouse right at the edge of his eye. And he's very frustrated as he goes to the corner. Well, from St. Martin tonight to South Dakota next Saturday night, join us April 20 when HBO Boxing After Dark presents Virgil Hill defending his light heavyweight title against undefeated contender Lou Del Valle, plus a heavyweight match featuring Lou Savarese and Buster Mathis Jr. Some of the best in the business work the night shift, as you'll see next Saturday night at 11.30 p.m. Eastern and Pacific. You considered fighting Lou Savarese at one point, didn't you, George? Uh, I don't know about that. You didn't think about it? No, no. Okay. Hold up those hands. That's all. This guy's getting desperate now. All right, guys. Let's take a look here and see something we've caught in our replays, how Rivera is stepping on uh, Purnell Whitaker's feet and punching, but he's getting away with it. It doesn't appear to be purposeful, but it's effective. And this fight is kind of ugly. It's, it's, it's a boxing, mauling, brawling, what? Harold, how do you have it after seven rounds? Well, Larry, I've got it a little bit closer. 67-66, four rounds to three, Perno Whitaker. I thought that Wilfredo Rivera did enough in round six and seven to win those rounds, make it a little bit closer. But the only thing is, I really question what Jim Strickland's using on that cut. Because you know, I'll tell you, he really closed it up awful fast. There's something funny about that, I don't know. I hate to say he's using Monzo's solution, which is illegal, but I want to tell you, that thing's not bleeding at all. I find it strange. Well, Be what careful, would happen Harold. if they found out that it was an illegal substance? Then he should lose under disqualification. I mean, you're not allowed to do it. But so, under what rules would it be illegal? There's no local commission here, Harold. But there is a local commission. They're, they're just being aided by Gary Shaw, and Larry has it. But I don't know. Do you, do you guys notice the same thing? I'm noticing it's not on out opened up. Well, I mean, we're giving yeah. Strick Strickland credit for having done a terrific job, and that's as far as we can go, frankly, Harold, because exactly. we don't know what he put in there. Exactly. But boy, the last two rounds, I mean, all you saw was that black mask there. And the thing about it, Pernell Whitaker went to the body and pushed and shelved a lot. He didn't even throw a lot of head punches at all. Tried to rest, take a little out of his opponent. Now he's going to the head a bit this round. Yep, and here comes the blood again out of the cut. So while it was effectively closed between rounds, it's opened up again here. Rivera, who has never knocked an opponent out past the seventh round, has to look at the likelihood of going the distance here. He switches back to the southpaw stance now to protect the bloody eye on the left side. Whitaker looking for a chance to pop to the body as he holds Rivera with his right arm. He knows every trick in the book, no doubt about it. Whitaker's a cat and he can scratch. <laughs> is taking the uh, charge with the left with this right jab, and that should never happen with a taller opponent. Good hard right hand by Rivera as Whitaker was stepping in. And Rivera now landing the harder shots and backing Whitaker up round after round. This could get interesting. You saw that Harold has it with only a one-point margin after seven rounds. Well, Whitaker's pretty smart. He picks a fight and he steps out of there. That's what you want to do with the younger fighter. Make them expend some of that energy. Pick the fight, but don't get into it. Back away once they start swinging. That's about the ugliest right hand I've ever seen. <laughs> Go ahead, close your eyes. No, 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 no,
Ponle presión. To apply that pressure. Óyeme, vamos abajo y después subimos. Let's go down to the Pero body and then go up to the head. Caminar. You have to use your combinations. Pero vamos a trabajar. El ojo está bien. The, the, okay. Your eyes is okay. Your eyes okay. Eso. But we have okay. to work. Throw punches. This is back in round three when their heads collided and Rivera's head took the worst of it. It does seem, Jim and George, that when it bleeds, that Whitaker wins the round. No doubt about it. The judges look at it like that. You think that influences judges, George? I'm a judge. Of course, I've never been one, but Harold Letterman has been. I'd look at that blood and say, oh, the guy's getting crushed. Harold, how about you? Larry, it should. You score the punches, you don't score the blood. Unfortunately, you're right, it does. A lot of judges, they see a guy bleeding, they, they just look at the other guy. You're 100% correct. It does influence the judges, and it should. But here's what else the judges might have seen in the last two rounds. Rivera almost doubling Whitaker's punch output, landing more punches, and constantly coming forward while Pete backs up. Now another timeout. Jim, let me say this much, it's getting interesting. If they stop it here, they score the partial round. In other words, they would score round nine. You know, round nine would become part of the scoring here, even though very little of round nine has been completed. But they're not stopping it, Harold. They're checking his glove at this point because apparently some of the tape came unwrapped. Right. And it seems to me a rest like that has to benefit Whitaker at this point. Amen to that. knows that Rivera's corner has told him to get out there and get on top of this guy. Try to finish him off. And now he can just step and jab. Jab, jab, step away. Occasionally open up with a combination, but main, maintain, he thinks, his lead. Now here comes the blood again. hand to the body. Rivera tapping punches. He doesn't throw nearly as hard when he's in the conventional stance and when the bloody side of his head is toward Pernell Whitaker. He's much more aggressive when he turns around and goes southpaw. Yeah, he seems not to care about the cut on his head as much. quite certain what they're watching in a lot of instances here. Of course, they don't have the benefit of a replay to see that the cut came from an accidental headbutt. Whitaker lands a hard right hand coming in, and Rivera switches back to the southpaw side. And, uh, the veteran Whitaker is doing smart stuff. He's a counterpuncher, and he's got a, a contender playing the counterpuncher game with him. Things just couldn't be better for him. Whitaker just missed a haymaker left. You're going to see Lou Duper jump on Pernell Whitaker this round. <laughs> Whitaker this is, drops his right hand down. This is beginning to look a little bit like a bullfight. With the bullfighter just poking blood from the bull. Okay. Okay. Good Come on, Wilford. Wilford, drink some water. Put a few wraps around it, okay? Sit down. Sit down. Sit down. Wilfredo, me oye? Uh, you look at that punch out, but for Whitaker, guys, he only threw 38 punches in the round. You have to keep applying that pressure. You get, keep working. Oye. Listen to me. Wilfredo, ese es el trabajo. Tiene que trabajar más. Three rounds. Three rounds. Earlier we sh showed you Rivera stepping on Whitaker's foot and hitting, and here you're seeing just the opposite, Whitaker stepping on Rivera's foot.
It often happens with left-handers when they meet, changing stances, it's inadvertent, but it does affect what happens when, when they do step on each other's feet. Rivera begins round 10 with a right-hand lead. Whitaker pecking and moving, pecking and moving. And Harold Letterman now has Rivera leading the fight. aggressor and Whitaker is backing up now here comes Purnell coming in he's gonna have to rally I think in these last three rounds George to be absolutely certain of making his impression on the judges you know the thing about Whitaker has been lending some hard shots and once you do that you have a tendency to ease up and say I heard him why throw a whole bunch more I'm winning around it's not looked at sometimes by the judges they see you just didn't throw a lot of punches they don't even count the hardness of your shots Well, Whitaker has never had to land hard shots to win. He's done it by piling up points round after round. He's won 83% of the rounds he's fought, almost all of them in championship fights, since his only loss to Jose Luis Ramirez several years ago. mouth constantly open as he breathes through his mouth. Of course, both fighters have a right to be tired as they come through the tent. This is a time in your career, you're smart, you've won a lot of boxing matches, but you need some advice from your corner. And once the corner gives you the advice, you gotta take it. Whitaker leaping in to try to land there. Whitaker needs some advice now. Yeah, and I'm not sure he's gotten the sense of urgency out of Ronnie Shields and Lou Duva that might be appropriate for this situation. He's playing right into the old counter punches game. Now he's throwing, leading, and Rivera is catching him on the counter. Whitaker doesn't like that. And Pete smiles and laughs at Rivera, and Rivera smiles and laughs right back at him as round 10 comes to a close. I know he did. Hey, hello. Come on. We need. Hey, Pete. I know he did. I know he did. Pete, we need a round. Pete, stay still. Got to, got to let's win a little bit. Got to, stay still. Let Joe do his job. Okay. Listen, just pay attention. Go ahead, Joe. Look, Pete, just pay attention, all right? Just pay attention to me. I'm going to stay in the middle. No, no. Stay in the middle, no. but you got to move your head. Let me take the mouthpiece out. Hey. You got to move your head. You understand? So we need one, one of these two rounds. That's all we need. We need one round, baby. One round. Two rounds to go, man. You have to go. You have to give me the best two rounds of your life right now. Put it, I have to apply that pressure. Give me the best two rounds. Let's go. You want to be a champ? You got to do this. Just a reminder, fellas, that earlier I said that a good fighter you haven't prepared seriously for can become more of a danger than a much better fighter you have prepared seriously for. It's never easy to, to know how much of a factor that is here, but this is a closer fight than many people anticipated. How close, Harold, Harold Letterman? Okay, Jim, I honestly believe that Colonel Whitaker is in definite danger of losing this fight. I've got it six rounds to four, 96, 94, Wilfredo Rivera. He's the aggressor, he's landing the hardest shots, Pete's backing up, give Wilfredo credit for clean punching, effective aggressiveness, good defense, I think he's winning. And that's all there is to it, I've given him the last five rounds in a row. I have Whitaker ahead by the same score, six rounds to four. I'll pretty much say it the same way. Whitaker's ahead, but what? Barely, barely. Whitaker's ahead in my book. He's going to have to maintain that lead by getting a bit more aggress aggressive. 
Whenever Rivera doubles up on that right hand, he just can't miss Whitaker's face. The judges are from New Jersey, Trinidad, and Hawaii. So two of the three are American judges. And of course, both of these technically are American fighters. Now Whitaker chopping away with the left hand as he begins to become more active in the 11th. That's kept Whitaker in the fight, that right jab of his. Whenever he gets behind, he applies that pressure with the jab, and the points start to add up again. When I say both fighters technically are American, of course, I refer to the fact that Puerto Rico is a protectorate under the auspices of the USA. Whitaker landed at a higher rate in round 10, but again, only through 35 punches. He does seem to be trying to bring the punch put, punch output up a little bit here, George. They have a strange look on Cornetico Whitaker's face, and you don't like to see that look on a veteran fighter's face because you think, when is that last fight that's going to happen? And every veteran has got to look for that last fight he has in him. Straight right hand shot lands for Rivera. And Rivera begins to fight as though he smells success. We're talking about one of the greatest champions in the sport, the man generally regarded as one of the two best pound-for-pound -pound fighters in the world. Would judges give him the benefit of the doubt? or the Puerto Rican fighter that they are likely not to have seen before? That question answers itself. He made Pernell Whitaker miss a straight left hand in the latter round. That just doesn't happen. Pete, last round, we got a second last up, round, Pete. Last round, baby. This we is need this gold, round. This is the gold medal right here. This is the gold medal round. This is what we be talking about in training camp. This is it right here. Now we got to... You have to apply the most pressure you possibly can in the last minute. Don't let him break. Keep busy. You know we're going to win this fight. Let's go one round to go. They got to throw combinations at this guy, right? Hustle, 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 baby. Don't let this guy out hustle you. Don't lay them high. He hustle. cannot fight going back, you understand? <laughs> throw, throw punches. You heard someone in the corner telling Cornell Whitaker this was a gold medal round. The Olympics meant a lot to Purnell. He told us he wanted to do well. And this year, the first time the Olympics have been held and will be held in the U.S. since he won the gold at Los Angeles. And he has to make a statement in this round. To Whitaker him. fans in the crowd chanting, Pete, Pete, Pete. In the 11th, he managed to up the punch out, put a little, he threw 43. But Rivera threw 73. He's still backing Whitaker up most of the time. High drama in the Caribbean. Hard right hand by Rivera. And the Puerto Rican contingent comes up out of its seats. Yeah, the hard reality is you get to be a veteran. I don't care if you had 100 boxing matches. This is still the fight game. And when it hits you in the 12th round that you got to fight, after all of this glamour of being pound for pound, all of that stuff, still got to fight to win. It hurts. Two vicious right-hand body shots by Rivera. Whitaker comes back with a hard left hand. Lucky with a right hand counter inside. Still the aggressor, still backing Whitaker up. Less than a minute and a half to go. I thought Whitaker's legs wobbled there for a moment. More than a moment. <laughs> I think he is mondo exhausto, guys. I think all the rumors about the training are proving all too true for Brunel Whitaker. 
even cut off the ring from Pernell Whitaker. That doesn't no happen one either. No one has been able to do that before. The question, is it all coming too late? Rivera was awfully patient in the early rounds when we thought he should have gone at Whitaker a little harder. This is what he should have been doing in the first six rounds. Whitaker not throwing much. Rivera looking to land a couple of more hard shots. Whitaker ducks into the corner against the taller man and doesn't get anything out of it. Now, veteran, you gotta play your tricks and you gotta play your tricks good. You gotta drop your hand, you gotta bounce, you gotta spin, you gotta run. And convince the younger fella, hey, I've got lots of energy. Wilfredo yeah. Rivera looking over Whitaker's shoulder at you and me, George, and winking at us. He believes that he's taking this thing from Cornell Whitaker. He thinks he's got it. He thinks he's got one of the biggest upsets in recent years in boxing. In a couple of minutes, we'll find out. I think he's on it. Look at the swelling above Whitaker's left eye. He has never looked like that before. What happened is, when you get older, you don't want to dry out, go without water, and dehydrate yourself anymore. You want to be a, a wealthy fellow. And what comes along with that? Puffing, swelling. <laughs> you gotta because pay your body's dues. just not as resilient as it is when you're it's perfectly It's not the trained. body, you just don't want to put it through the grind to make it like that anymore. Yep. You can do it, but you gotta, you gotta want it. Well, according to punch stat numbers in round 12, Whitaker threw 32 punches and Rivera threw 70. Whitaker landing 11, Rivera landing 24. I don't see how you could score the round any other way the, uh, other than for Wilfredo Rivera. And there's Harold Letterman's card. Harold. Jim, I've got, I think it's the end of it here in boxing. I've got a 115, 113, seven rounds to five, Wilfredo Rivera. Jim, I just go for the aggressive guy every time. I mean, this is effective aggressiveness. He moved forward, he punched, he landed. You can't take it away from a guy who's the effective aggressor. He just, he will win 99% of the time. Wilfredo Rivera carried this fight to Whitaker, backed him up, he hurt him, he whacked him, he banged him. He did everything he has to do to become the welterweight champion of the world. George, you think Purnell held on and won the fight? Yeah, I think he had too many of the earlier round. In my mind, I think that pulls it out for him. Rivera was trying to catch up, and he caught up in the last round as far as winning, but I don't think he had enough rounds in the bank, in my mind. But then I'm not a judge. Well, there you have it. I mean, those are, those are the two ways that this particular pendulum could swing. Either Whitaker won it by putting away the early rounds and building a commanding lead, or Rivera won it by being more aggressive and by being the commander in the late rounds. Final punch stat numbers, and you're going to look at a huge disparity in punches thrown. You can see that Wilfredo Rivera threw 175 more punches than Whitaker, landed more than Whitaker, and even though the percentage is lower, he was backing Purnell up for the last seven rounds of the fight. Power punches, and Purnell threw more of them tonight than he might normally throw. Huh, only landed 20 out of 93. Look at that, 402 power punches for Rivera and he landed 141 of them. So by punch stat numbers, there's a disparity in favor of Rivera in activity, but in favor of Whitaker in terms of accuracy. Let's go to Michael Buffer. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the scorecards and we have a split decision. Barbara Perez scores the bout 116 to 113. She has it for Rivera. George St. Ada scores the bout of 115 to 113. He has it for Whitaker. Tamatsu Tamehara scores the bout 117 to 112 for the winner by split decision and still WBC welterweight champion of the world, Pernell Sweet Pea.
George Foreman, I got one question for you. Did that decision say that you've got to beat a great champion like Whitaker by a wider margin than that? No doubt about it. Uh, Rivera did a good job in the final rounds, but when it was very important to establish himself as the, the fighter to win this fight, he laid back too long. The first six rounds were clearly Pernell Whitaker and big for Pernell Whitaker. Let's go to Larry Merchant with the winner, Sweet P. Whitaker. All right, Pernell, congratulations, but barely. Did you think when you heard them say split decision that you had lost this title? No, not at all. Not at all. Um, it was a good fight, you know. Um, these guys, uh, got to understand, these guys don't come in. They come in to win. And um, but well, the fight well, was easy for me, you know, but... Um, but it wasn't easy for you in the last rounds when he seemed to be pressing you, hitting you more than we're used to seeing you hit. That's that's you guys will spoil you. You know, you guys think I can't get hit. You know, but uh, obviously, you know, um, it was a good fight. He was, good. he was hungry. He wanted to win. Wanted to win. And um, and you can't afford that. You know, but you know, I always do the things that get me through. Were were you in the kind of condition that could give twelve Pernell Whitaker rounds? You've seen it. You know. Uh, Obviously, I could go 12 rounds. No, well, no, 12 rounds, but what we saw is him coming on in the last half of the fight. Strong fighter. Oh, so, um, but, you know, I'm a good finisher, you know. Um, I can finish, I can do it all. It's nothing what I haven't done. It's nothing that I haven't done that's already been done. What you gave, know? what about him gave you the most trouble? Oh, no, it was no problem. He just came in, he was ready, you know, he was ready. You know what, he came in to win the fight, and, and I just came in, I was, I was prepared. For to take his best. How you know, did the how take did, anything away from the fighter? He's a good fighter. Um, how did the bleeding forehead play into the fight? Um, whose forehead? You know, what, his forehead and I mean, all the blood that was coming. You have to ask him. You know, um, I just took advantage of what I had. You know, um, it was a good shot. You know, if we had buddy heads like that, I think I would be bleeding. Also. No, but th th we did see on our pictures. I know you that always, it was see, a always see everything that I do wrong. <laughs> no, but, you know, Pernell. obviously. We're going to leave out of here like this. One more time for the Gipper. <laughs> well, it, it just tell us, just tell us. Uh, uh, you know, uh, you, have to, you have to bring in the big fights, you know. I can't keep, obviously, these guys get up for fighters like myself just as well. If, once I can get, a, get one of these bums in the ring that can stand up and give me a challenge, that I can prepare for. All right, then you, you, can, you can get a great fight. Right, are, are you oh, saying God. what I said earlier that it may be easier for you to fight a great fighter because you're going to be in top exactly. top shape and motivated oh i'm always in top great shape you know i don't go in camp i don't half step i don't play around i don't cut corners i don't do anything but work towards my opponent so um you know i came in in great shape and i came in prepared in preparation of going 12 rounds with uh i didn't take him for granted no one knew about this guy you guys didn't know anything too much about it but he showed himself he showcased himself he's a great fighter he's a good individual and i'm sure he'll be world champion when his time comes given the fact that decisions can be crazy do you just feel a little bit lucky tonight that you got out of here with this no i don't feel lucky you know i came in to win whatever it takes to win you know for, for now, for 12 years straight, I've been a winner. That, that is true, but do you think... And I'm going to continue to be a winner until I pass on. Do you think that a champion who has been around as long as you have, and this was your 19th championship fight, it's might get... to come work beside you now, Larry. <laughs> might get the benefit of doubt in some close rounds, and that that helps you tonight? Oh, no, I don't, I, I don't, want, I, I don't, want, I don't want to go into that. You know, I'm not going to say that the judges were for me. You know, that's, 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 that's picking. You know, uh, I don't choose the judges. I don't pick the judges. I don't know the judges. They, they judge who's, the fight. who's next? If you want a big fight. You might be next, Larry. I'm no, fighting no, for no, your no, job. No, no. I can't win. <laughs> no, tell me. I can't uh, win the interview. You, we, we hear there are negotiations going on with Trinidad. Is this Trinidad. true? Yeah. Obviously it is. And, uh, and you know, with, with, with guys like that, the fights that the fans want to see, the people want to see, let's get up for it. Let's go. Let's keep them from waiting. Obviously, I just go on and on proving myself when I don't have to. Larry, guys he's like, never back down guys on like, he's never, you know that. All right, guys. Fight, like their they'll opponent. fight Quatre, they'll fight Trinidad, they'll fight Chavez, they'll fight DeLaurea, right. they'll you know, fight anybody out there. All right, I know, and he'll fight well, me. Fight. Thank you, Ray Pee Wee. Give, and give thank you, Sweet Pee. Great fight. Good fight. All right, Wilfredo, 
Thank you very much. Congratulations on a, on a great fight. Did you think you had won the fight? Claro, estoy presionando todo el tiempo. I'm pressing hard. I'm working hard. Every time he, 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 he go for the, for the holding, jab, holding, use your head. Go in this area, you know, the, the the abajo, the belt. abajo. All right, do you think he got the benefit of the doubt because he's been such a long time, highly respected champion? Oh, él tiene mucha experiencia, es un buen campeón, pero desde, no es por criticar a nadie, ni por, ni por ponerle en duda a nadie, pero él no se pesó legalmente, se trepó la báscula, se bajó. Ahora mismo estuvo corriendo, agarrándose, dándole con la cabeza, a golpes bajos, y en ningún momento le decían nada, al contrario, decían Wittek, ok, ok, Wittek, no, nunca le quedan puntos, y lo regañaron más de 10 veces. Yeah, he's concerned that, uh, you know, he was uh, uh, scolded many times, uh, he's concerned that, uh, about the scale, when he went up on the scale and got off, he doesn't, he didn't, doesn't believe that uh, Whitaker actually made his weight. Uh, so he is saying, in effect, that he thinks that Whitaker got a lot of the benefit of doubts here tonight. Porque es porque él es campeón que que él ganó esta pelea entonces. Sí, no solo porque es campeón porque es el 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 muchacho protegido de de la de la firma promotora es es un campeón de mucho prestigio y pues una una decisión no se van a cerrar al retador. It's not only because he's the champion, but the uh, the promoters are the uh, uh, he's he fights for the promoter of this fight. Tell us about the headbutt and how the blood affected your fight. Uh, dinos, uh, que nos diga que, qué efecto tuvo tu cortada en la pelea. Oh, tuvo mucha porque eh, este, yo no tengo miedo a otra sangre. Soy un gallo de cría, como decían los boricuas. I'm not afraid of uh, the, uh, shame blood. Pero la sangre me estaba cayendo en el ojo. But the blood was uh, just going in my eyes. Y solamente estaba peleando Whitaker con medio boxeador porque tenía un solo ojo. Este ojo, and, en este no was, veía. And most of the time I was only fighting Whitaker with one eye because I couldn't see out of the other eye. So do you think that the blood that was pouring down over your face was the ultimate determining factor in this fight. ¿Tú crees que entonces que la sangre que te estaba cayendo por la cara fue la que determinó la pelea? No, no, yo gané como quiera, únicamente que no veía bien la pelea, lo veía bien y pues pude haberle colocado más mejores golpes, pero yo gané como quiera porque estuve presionando, es lo que hacer agarrar y dame otra vez con la cabeza, golpes bajos, un solo ya, únicamente me entraba limpio un solo ya o dos por round. Yeah, regardless of the blood, I know I won this fight. You know, he was fighting fighting a little dirty, he hit me below the belt, he was hitting me with, with his head. He was fighting dirty. Thank you very much, Wilfredo. I'm sorry, Appreciate I, it. Two minutes, please. I say, Mr. Martin, hello, people. Thank you for, for, for having me in this, on this island. I love this island. Welcome to Puerto Rico when I go from Puerto Rico. Thank you very much. Puerto Rico, los quiero mucho. Ganamos la pelea. Jim, George. <laughs> Thank you very much, Larry. I'll tell you what. Whitaker says he'll fight Cuarte, he'll fight Trinidad, he'll fight Chavez. I got one question. Will he fight Wilfredo Rivera again? This I, kid deserves a rematch. I don't think so. You but if I'm his so. manager, Rivera, I'll, tell, I'll be demanding a rematch. And I think he can win it, too. This guy deserves a rematch. Well, he certainly wouldn't be in any way intimidated or afraid of uh, Whitaker the next time he around. He knows the way through the woods now and how to find uh, the, what is it, the gingerbread house? Right. He knows the way to the to the gingerbread house this time. Well, let's go back to the whole theme of the evening. You'll recall at the start of the evening, this is all about the question of whether somebody's going to set up Whitaker versus Quarte down the road. And you saw Quarte whack out his opponent with a terrific, technically brilliant third round knockout. If Quarte got ready to go in against Whitaker three months from now, <laughs> well, I tell you, if I'm telling Whitaker...